everyone, welcome back to yet another video here on our snowfall and potential severe weather coming into the United States. And last time we looked at the models, which is what we're looking at right now, you could see that we had some decent snowfall coming to the Northeast and New England. We've actually had some last minute changes that we're going to be going over. So we're about to look at our newest model run in this forecast. And also we've got a couple more snowstorms after this that could bring some additional snowfall to folks that really haven't seen that much snow across the United States. Now, in terms of our severe weather, we are also watching out for the threat of severe weather coming actually pretty soon, potentially as early as the 11th, moving all the way into the 12th, 13th, and then maybe even another wave of instability coming back into the United States after that. We're going to be breaking down how much certainty we have on either one of these events, whether it's snow or severe weather in this forecast. So if you do enjoy this forecast, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, everybody, it's time to get down and nerdy with some of these weather models right now. This is the European model looking at the 500 millibar height. So this is about where those commercial airlines fly. And as you can see, we're going to have a lot of low pressure systems kind of enter into the northern United States. But on the southern side of some of these storms uh, that are going into Canada, uh, we're going to be seeing a couple of short wave troughs develop into the United States. And they're going to be kind of riding in between this low pressure and this high pressure system. And that's why we're going to be seeing some increased low pressure activity, mainly Mainly going into the eastern United States, bringing some extra snowfall as well. But we're also expecting some snow potential back over here in the central plains as well. You guys really haven't seen too much snow this year, but that could change as we move into the future. But the kind of the main story here, at least for the severe weather, is going to be this high pressure system that is down here in the south. This is going to be kind of hanging out, keeping the temperatures relatively warm, at least according to the euro. Now, we do have some differences still between the GFS and the euro in terms of just how strong this this high pressure system, but the Euro has a healthy one, exits off the East Coast and kind of slingshot some of that Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico moisture up into the United States. So we're still monitoring that potential. The Euro is still our most bullish model on this and the GFS is still saying it's just not buying it. So we have some differences to work out still. But we'll be going more into detail on what those differences are. But essentially, this is the setup that's going to be kind of the background pattern and why we're going to see storm after storm kind of come through this area, bringing in the potential for not only winter storms, but uh, maybe even a couple of tornadoes being possible. Now, of course, as always, in order to determine whether or not snow is going to be possible uh, or severe weather is looking at the temperatures here. And as I push this forward, you can see that we do have, uh, you know, some pretty warm temperatures here in the southeast and some cooler temperatures that are going to be pouring into the northern United States, but not really making it that far down to the south until we get into about the 10th of February, where we really start to see some of those warmer temperatures retreat a little bit further down to the south, but they still kind of hang on here as we move into the future but those cooler temperatures are definitely going to be setting up here in the northern portion of the united states so any one of those low pressure systems that kind of comes into this area on the northern side of it is definitely going to have that potential to drop some snow and as i push this into the 11th here you can see that those warm temperatures continue to try to combat this cold down there in the southeast that's going to be contributing to some of our excess instability or storm food that's going to be possible out in front of some of the storms that could develop with some of these low pressure systems so we definitely got to keep an eye on a severe weather potential as long as this warm air is kind of hanging around here and yeah you can see that as we move into the 12th it's going to get a lot colder here in the northern and central plains and still hanging on to some below freezing temperatures across the ohio valley and up into the northeast and then once we move into the 13th we could actually see a pretty big push of that cooler air down into texas and down into areas like arkansas oklahoma as well and look over here you see the sharp boundary here on the european model uh, this is on the 13th here we got a sharp boundary of that cold and warm air that's going to set up for some severe weather and that's actually one of our storms kind of moving through here that we're monitoring for future potential for severe weather and tornadoes and as i continue to push this forward you can see that that warm air kind of gets swept out of the united states as we move into the 14th and we have a lot of cool air still hanging around on the northern side of the united states now again this is not going to be anything that we saw in january with some of those arctic blasts but a little bit of canadian air is going to try to make its way uh, into especially the northern united states the great lakes regions and the northeast 
East as we go throughout the next week. But the bottom line is here, you know, we're definitely going to seem to have enough warm air down here in the south and enough cold air uh, up in the north to support both snowstorms and severe weather. But there is a little bit of a catch here. If we move on over to the GFS here, you can see we got a different story. We get that warm air and vect up to the north, maybe some severe weather potential as we go into the ninth, but it's probably a low end. Uh, and then as we move into, you know, the, the 10th, also uh, into the 11th, you can really see that that warm air recedes a lot further down to the south on the GFS with a little bit cooler temperatures moving in on the northern side of the United States. So, you know, a, this would definitely uh, be a kind of a lower end severe weather scenario if the GFS is right. But we can't completely rule out, you know, the potential for maybe even significant severe weather. It's just going to be a lot further down to the south. And we still need to wait a little while to see if the GFS is going to cave to the euro or if it's going to cave to the GFS. So a lot of things to try to figure out here. But regardless, both models are kind of in agreement here that we are going to have enough cooler air set up here in the Central Plains and then also into the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley and the Northeast for some snowstorms to come through. It really just depends on what those low pressures are going to do. So let's kind of go storm by storm here and break down what is possible here across the United States. So first off, looking at the Euro model, this is our latest run on the Euro. And as you can see, pushing this forward through the 8th, this is when we're going to be expecting our first decent shot of snow here. Now, this is one of the things that we've been talking about in terms of a last minute change. In terms of the location of where the snow is falling, that's still kind of still the locations that we are expecting the most snow. But we are starting to see a little bit of a downgrade in comparison to before. So this is what it looks like on our latest run. Let's go about two runs back and then check out the same time frame and see the differences. Yeah, the Euro run uh, about two runs ago definitely had a little bit of a heavier snowfall event for a little bit longer up here uh, going into northern Pennsylvania, also into New England and the Northeast and New York. And for a little bit longer in comparison to this latest year, Euro run, which actually still does have a pretty decent shot here uh, for some heavier snowfall, but it looks like it develops just a little bit later in comparison to what we saw on some of our other model runs, meaning that we're not going to see as much heavy snow for as long, but definitely a quick shot of heavy snow is possible, you know, as we move really starting at around 6 p.m. here on the 8th and then transitioning more into a heavy snowfall event with some pretty heavy freezing rain there down into southeastern Pennsylvania, moving into northern New Jersey as we move into the 9th really early morning there. And then that snow continues into the 9th by around 6 a.m. And then once we get into 12 p.m., a lot of that snowfall is starting to quit. A lot of it is starting to kind of become a lot lighter, especially over there in Vermont and New Hampshire with a little bit still hanging on onto the East Coast. So we're going to look at the Euro snowfall first, and then we'll go check out the GFS's solution on this storm and see if we have an agreement here on some of these downtrends. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, our first little snowstorm here from the kind of the late on the 8th going into the 9th and into the 10th here, you can see that you know, further up to the north, we, this is probably where we've seen the most significant downgrade. You know, a lot of people were unfortunately sharing snow maps uh, a little bit too early on this one. We got to be a little bit careful with our weather pattern. We've been talking about how just uncertain the weather has been this month. And I think that's going to continue uh, throughout at least until the middle, close to the end of the month, because the, the caliber of these storms are a little bit on the weaker side. So although heavier snow will still be possible with some of those types of storms, they're going to be a little bit harder to nail down exactly where the snow fall is going to be. But man, there were some maps about two days ago that had almost a foot of snow here for Minnesota. But now we're only talking about, you know, one to three inches, maybe even four inches up there in Minnesota. Also in northern Michigan, three to four inches over there. Now, northern Pennsylvania going into New York, as you can see, we've probably shaved about an inch off of your guys' snowfall totals. And depending on where you live, you could have had maybe even 12 inches of snow possible. But now we're only talking about five to six inches here on the Euro model. So a big downgrade for some folks. Not that big of a downgrade, especially if you live over here near Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, but a downgrade nonetheless. And remember, you know, when we were looking at the GFS the last time, it had some areas with a foot of snow. So let's go look at the GFS again and see how our models differ and if there's a downtrend across the board or if we still have some hope for some heavier snowfall amounts. So here's the latest GFS run. And as you could see, it kind of comes in with some heavier snow a little bit earlier there.
there up into northern Ohio, going into northern Pennsylvania. And then that scoots off to the east, kind of hangs out for a little bit longer, kind of on the same time frame. I would say maybe a little bit faster than the Giro. But overall, you know, they're both kind of showing a pretty similar scenario. Some lighter snow starting off the first up there in Minnesota, going into Wisconsin, also Michigan as well. And then it really starts to bring some heavier snow as we move into the ninth, early morning on the ninth, kind of similar to what the Giro was saying. And then, uh, you know, give it a couple hours and it's pretty much out of our hair with some light snow existing on the backside. So not too many differences there, but there are a little bit of differences still existing uh, in terms of our total snowfall. As you can see, the GFS has a little bit of a wider area for about six to eight inches of snow possible here in southeastern New York, going into southern Vermont, New Hampshire, also Massachusetts still has some isolated spots possible of almost up to 10 inches. The further that you go down to the south, though, over there in Connecticut and Rhode Island, the story changes a little bit. But uh, over here in Minnesota, northern Wisconsin and northern Michigan, the story is kind of similar here. Definitely not that much snow, to be honest. Three to four inches is like a walk in the park for these states. So definitely not worried about any impacts up there. Just a nice little snowfall on top of whatever you guys still have left. But over here, you know, yesterday we had a pretty bright area of pink in this area. And as you can see, now we have a little bit of a darker pink. That's indicating that we have lower snowfall amounts here. Probably, you know, your average amount anywhere in this purple is going to be from six to eight inches. And that is if the GFS confirms here the euro obviously has a little bit lower amounts so you know it, the the total amounts are still a little bit up in the range but you know we're talking about four to eight inches being possible for most of these areas in the purple but wait there's more <laughs> we not only are we going to have this storm kind of roll through the, the northeast after that one uh, we are going to be seeing yet another snowstorm try to develop and you know we've been talking about this storm but you know giving the warning that hey these snowfalls uh, amounts and the type of storm that we're going to get could change and could change quite drastically again we've been talking about the uncertainty in these models in february and we're really seeing a downtrend on this snow event at least on the euro here could still bring some decent snowfall there in nebraska going into maybe kansas parts of missouri a little bit there in the ohio valley but there's like some little bit of a snow hole that develops there in parts of southern illinois and in indiana also for parts of ohio and then we see this thing try to strengthen off of the coast and then after this storm we see yet a another uh, area of uh, low pressure come in bringing some more snow as we move into the 12th also the 13th and then eventually that could strengthen but again this could change a lot as we get closer to this so this might bring some significant snow or we might get see it get suppressed as we get closer and closer kind of like what we've been seeing with a lot of our other models it seems to be a trend in this february where we get these false signals that we got these big snowstorms coming and then you know as we get closer they kind of downtrend a little bit so you know still some decent snow snowfall coming for some folks, but I have a lot of low certainty on this uh, particular storm going into the 13th. Now let's check out the GFS on our next snowstorm after that. This is snowstorm number two. And as you can see, it's a little bit more suppressed to the south with some heavier snow there into Kentucky, Northern Virginia and Pennsylvania. But still, you know, we're, we're really not talking about, you know, uh, a, a lot of heavier snow, but a decent amount in a long period of some more moderate snow. You know, we don't really ever see this thing really pretty produce too much heavy snow but you know it, it definitely is going to be hanging around in that area for a decent amount of time so is this going to be the 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 exact way it's going to go probably not we're probably going to still see some changes in shifts but the gfs is still you know indicating a decent snowstorm really for nebraska going into kansas missouri even iowa maybe all of the ohio valley as well and then pushing into parts of northern virginia and pennsylvania as we move you know really starting on the 10th and then moving throughout the 11th is when this is going to be happening ending on the 12th early morning to the afternoon before our next storm kind of recharges here and then looking at that storm on the gfs there is a little bit of agreement between our models that we can have an amplified low pressure system bringing more heavier snow up into the northeast but still big question marks on this guy definitely expecting a couple of shifts chazzy enough all right looking at our snowfall potential for the next six days or so you can see that the snow map has changed uh, quite a bit here on the gfs we have uh, still the potential for a thick area here of some you know anywhere from five to almost a foot of snow but again this is going to change as we get closer and honestly just given the pattern recognition that i've been seeing this february it would not surprise me if we saw these amounts go down more than up but you know weather models can be random random that trend could change with this next storm so we definitely got to keep our eye 
on that and continue to give you guys updates. But also over here in, into Kansas and southern Nebraska, we could be talking about anywhere from, you know, six, maybe even eight inches of snow. Eight, potentially that could move into Missouri as well. But let's go check out how these models differ. This is the GFS. Let's go check out the Euro next. Now you can see the Euro within the same time period is not bullish. Only six to seven inches over here in northern Virginia. Still some scan amount of snow there in southern Missouri going into southern Illinois and also northern Kentucky. Maybe even five to four inches possible over there. But the, you can see the, the blues on this map are a lot more few and far between. And that's because the Euro is just not as much of an amplified storm earlier on with some lower snowfall accumulations but still you can kind of see that general area where the snow could fall is pretty similar between both of our models so definitely keeping an eye on this storm we're definitely going to see some trend changes but it does seem like we do have some decent snow still on the way winter is certainly not over now in terms of instability and the chances for severe weather across the united states it's going to be pretty quiet over the next couple of days but as we move into the 11th the euro is saying that we could have some instability start to pull up here in texas with up to over a thousand joules per kilogram which is plenty here as we move into the 11th now as we go into the same time period here you can see that the jet stream that upper level winds that contribute to some of that spin in the atmosphere we do have some decent upper level winds they're not really strong but this is just the beginning of the storm um, but as you can see as we push this into the future that does organize a little bit more and we start to see some stronger upper level winds we've got a positively tilted trough here so we're not talking about you know a blockbuster storm by any means but as we come into the lower levels you can also see as those upper level winds start to pick up so, so do the lower level winds so it's going to be another area where we're going to have to watch out for that severe weather potential especially as if we get any elevated portions here of our lower level jet. I'm, I'm thinking the 12th is going to be a day we're going to have to look at maybe the 11th as well. Uh, but the 12th could be particularly dangerous if we do see this kind of uh, setup happen here uh, with enough instability. Hopping back over to our instability, you can see that that instability, at least on the Euro throughout the 11th uh, and the 12th, does pick up there with that lower level jet. Now, you know, we're not seeing like a large area that is over a thousand joules per kilogram, but with that lower level jet kicking in with that upper level jet, associated with it that spin is going to be enough to kind of overcome some of this weaker storm food values now you could think i always say this you could think of ozempic um you know kind of like what the shear is for this storm so like you know when you have not a lot of storm food the ozempic the shear can be high enough to a point where you know your storms don't feel starving so they keep on going and they keep on trying to to, to produce energy and you know that's <laughs> it it's it, it, it's not the best metaphor for, but it, it kind of gives you a picture in the head of what's happening. You know, the storm food is low, but the shear is going to help these storms still try to be severe here. So we do have to watch out for this Euro solution. Um, you know, uh, but I will say the GFS has some big differences, but if the Euro does confirm here, we could have severe weather possible all the way throughout the Southeast and potentially making its way up into like areas like North Carolina and Virginia. But again, this could change. And then after this one, the, the Euro model reloads here and we get a lot of instant stability. This could be a significant severe weather event, but we're a little bit too far out to say anything certain on it. This will probably change as we get closer, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye uh, on the uh, the 15th through the 16th here, uh, as that does look a little bit dangerous. Now, coming over to the GFS is where we really start to see some differences here. It's honestly quite astonishing just how different, the, different these models are uh, within these time periods. You can see the GFS going into the 11th just doesn't bring any of that storm food. You know, these blues and these light greens anywhere up into the United States. You can see a lot of whites around there because there's just not a whole lot of instability at all. You know, once we get into the 12th, the GFS does bring enough um, moisture up to the north to maybe cause some severe weather there. Uh, with that lower level shear that the Euro was picking up, this would kind of be enough for more of a severe weather threat near the coast here. But, you know, given the fact that we have less moisture there, uh, most likely means that the lower level jet here with the uh, GFS is a little bit weaker. So let's go check that out as we move into the 12th. Let's see here. Here's the lower level jet pushing this into the 12th yeah you can see that we're in the oranges not the reds here on the gfs so that's in a little bit more of a kind of smushed low pressure system giving the uh, the the moisture is not going to really affect that much of 
up to the north, this kind of makes sense. So definitely less of a severe weather signal from the GFS. We're going to really have to monitor to see if these things line up uh, together, if they start to agree, and where do they agree? You know, if we start to see this moisture go a lot further up north here on the GFS, that's when our alarm bells are going to go off that we're getting agreement for more widespread severe weather. But if it still stays muted this far down to the south, we're probably not going to see much happen at uh, unless you live like there in like New Orleans and in southern Mississippi, which, you know, we could still easily get, you know, some tornadoes down there if the setup uh, continues to stay on the models. But yeah, everybody, that's it for me. Thank you so much again for tuning in. If you did enjoy this forecast, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys uh, on the next video. Thank you again for tuning in. Peace.